This is Code.org. We're taking a look at the Quote Maker app today, which is going to be fun to build out. Now, to analyze this, we're going to take a look at this activity guide. I'll point you in the right direction on it. Some of it is definitely your opinion, but let's see what steps you're going to need to take to make sure you're understanding and laying out an excellent plan. Which, which I um, also have here uh, in a Google Doc version so I can edit it. All right, let's take a look at our activity guide. Try many different options. Pay attention to what's happening on the screen. When you move the slider or choose an item from the dropdown, when does the screen update? What happens if you choose, la choose lavender and uh, lucidia sands from the dropdown? Try choosing light green, light green, interesting, and moving the slider until you receive feedback. Okay, let's try out some of those things. So run, quote, Hello world. When you get into programming, you'll get the joke there. Well, it's not a joke. It's the first program. Not the first. It's the first one people usually do. I ruined it. All right. Lucidia Sands and then light green, they said. Okay. Oh, nice design. What if I... Okay. Now what if I choose light blue? Okay. Hmm. Oh, lavender. So it's changing the text, and we can increase the size. Lucidia Sands, Lavender. Oh, great combo. Oh, it's a bit different. Okay, so that's different. And then light green, nice design. Everything else was nice design. This looks like we can change the text. This is a variable that's allowing us to change the font and a variable for color. And then the quote we can also change as well. Okay, try light green and move the slider. Oh, you see that? It's a little like Easter egg looking fresh right there. Cool. All right, let's see. Fill in the table with each variable you need to create. They start us with color and font family. And like we're choosing right here. This is a font family. It even says it when you start it, right? Font family. And so they started us with color and font family. What else is probably being stored here? Well, for instance, if we are typing something in here and it is getting displayed somewhere else, how are they doing that? They're not magicking it. The computer has to use a get text and then store it where, right? So if we're entering something here, there would be a get text code block and somehow they have to save it. Well, how do you save stuff? And variable. So that's gonna need a variable. What else? Well, think about the font size, okay? If I move this down here, the computer doesn't just say, oh, yeah, that's about a fourth of the way, so we'll cut the text by a fourth. No, 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 no. We assign values to this. So maybe the designer put this spot at, I don't know, a 14 size font, and this at 18, so on and so forth. And so to store that value as I drag it along, it's not magic, it is a... So I would definitely think about adding stuff to store the quote and to store the so font size and values. Now, what does it store? Well, font size would be storing a number, obviously, so on and so forth. All right, let's take a look at this. If, ooh, an if else statement is used to check if certain options have been selected. Set up the conditional below, that just means if statement, using the variables you've created above. Okay, so I'll start this off. If color, color, oh, wait a minute. Choose your own combinations. Oh, cool. So I'm going to say if color is equal to red and font family is me, me. Ooh, I'll do times because I'm boring. And notice I'm putting that in quotes because it's a word, right? These aren't numbers. So if font family is red and font is times and choose any color you want. Is red an option? See, I can't even pick red. I'm dumb. Um, I guess I'll do light green. Whoops. So I have to choose one that they have. Okay, light green and times. What do I want the message to say? Not a clue. Lucky choice. Lucky pick. Yeah. All right. So now, as long as font, the color is equal to green that they chose, and and, so both of these must be true. So the person would have to choose light green and the font family they have chosen is times. Only then is it going to push or say lucky pick out in the response area right here. Okay. Ooh, that's another thing to think about. How many variable slots did they give us? Oh, okay. I wonder how they're making that happen. But anyways, 
uh, else. So else is what happens. The computer only looks at an else statement if this is false. So if this is true, it will never go down here and take a look. That being said, if this is false, we might want to test something else. Okay, well, that wasn't true. What if it is impact uh, and uh, light pink, I'll say. So same deal here, right? You can choose what if it's impact. Oh, oh, and look, they left these blank. I don't have to do color and font family again. Oh, okay. Well, then I'm going to do... And they don't show us these numbers, so I'm going to guess. So I'll say, what if I had a font size variable up here? Well, if I did, I might say font size, and your variable name is never in quotes. And I don't know. And since this is a number, I'm also not putting it in quotes because we'll use get number with it. So I'll say if the font size is 14, and then if uh, the color is, uh, color is going to be in quotes, light pink, I'll say, I, not a clue. For pink is cool. I'm not exactly creative with these. Else, by the way, guys, is the default. So this is what will happen if neither of these are true. So in this, what is the text default? It looks like it's most of the time this. And we could choose our own option, but that's what they're saying, right? This is what happens almost all of the time, unless the special circumstance that we have light green or these options selected. All right, let's take a look what they're saying here. What elements on the screen do need to be updated using variables above? Consider what should be included in a function that updates the screen. Write out a plan, things you think above. What elements on the screen need to be updated using the variables above? Okay, and they would give us some hints here. What needs to be updated? Well, we change this thing up here, right? We change the color, we change what it says. So what elements on the screen need to be updated using, does the conditional above belong in the function? Okay, so I'm just gonna list things because this is your assignment, but what elements on the screen? Well, I would think, I would think the uh, uh, main text or the center text is changed to be the user's input, right? Uh, the background color is changed, all of this stuff, right? That would be what else has changed, right? So what elements, the font size has changed, what else might be changed on the screen? It's not all up here, hint, hint, there might be other areas where a change is happening. So that's really what you're going to want to list out. Um, and of course, I'm just doing a list, you would want it sentences, does the condition above belong in a function? Now, a function is a chunk of code that you use so you don't have to repeat yourself. And I think they're trying to give you a hint here, right? So what does this stuff do? Hmm. Well, set text, set text, set text. Huh. Is that changing the screen or something? And would you want to check these things in more than one area? For instance, what if you wanted to check them when they touched an up button or a down button, or you wanted to check them when they changed the font type or also the font color? Also, you want to check if they do the font size. Would you want to write this if thing or whatever your if is three times? If you're saying, no, I don't want to repeat myself. Well, like they're showing here, oftentimes it's better to do a function for something like that. Now, if you are doing a function, when is it called? Calling a function just means saying their name. So it looks like they say the name right here at the top of their program. That would make sense, right? To put the stuff on the screen when it starts. And then when are they checking all those if statements again? Huh. Well, when the up button on this app is pressed and when the down button. So think about your app. When should you call the function? When should you check all those if statements again? Because the function would likely contain all of that stuff. All right. Inputs. What are the inputs for your app? These will be turned into on events. Okay. Where an in input just means where can the user interact, right? Most likely. Now, they already have quote input. The text on the screen appears one character at a time. Font family input, change, okay? So action, change. Um, we can also do, there's no submit button, right? So what about the drop down menu? Do they have either of those? Quote input, font family, nope. So we need a, oh wait, font family, quote, yep. So what you want to look at is what does the user interact with, right? They gave us two, but what else is the user messing around with? 
Uh, well, for example, one thing is font size one, which is slider. So I would say slider, right, for font size one here, font size. And then what's the result? Uh, the text on the screen appears one character at a time as it is typed. The result for this, right, would be larger. It is increased in size. The font is changed with our font slider, but that's what they're asking for. So you do want to analyze this and make sure you include all aspects of how the user can interact with that. You really do want to think about how a function could be used. I'm really excited to get started on this application.